Welcome to the Essence Spiel. Whoa! Woo! <laughs> Anyhow, well, it says Hall on the screen there, so that's good at least. All right, hey, I just got back from Essen, the Essen Fair 2019. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Roy got back from North Carolina. Woo! <laughs> All right, so I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Roy Kenny. We are the only two people in the office because everybody else is sleeping. So there's no Wait, Kenny. You were allowed to sleep? <laughs> oh, I don't man. have time for sleeping. <laughs> so what we're doing here is we brought back a pile of games. Now this is probably this is less than half the games that we got at the Holy at smokes. the convention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we brought back piles in our suitcases mm -hmm. and then we shipped eleven or so boxes that are coming back in the mail, and when we get those, we'll do part two of this unboxing. The hottest games are probably here, but they may or may, may not be. Nice. They may be in those. Also, I got a lot of games in the mail while I was at Essen, so that's mixed in this mess too. I'm excited because I haven't seen like any of these games, so, so it's gonna be like, what is this, what is this? This is just gonna be, so a couple things, first of all, um, we're trying to keep track of everything here, watching the fit people in the chat, yay, mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Um, Roy and me are the only people here in the office, so Roy's going to be jumping off camera sometimes. i got to go over there and change <laughs> to, the shot. To change the shot and things like that, so keep that in mind. And we're also taking games, putting them on the table, and throwing them over there, so the room's going to get pretty messy pretty quickly. There is no way on this green earth that these are all going to get reviewed in the next week. Wait, Let what? alone month. Let alone months. And that's not lack of me being able to edit them. That's Tom being able to review them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, no, that's the truth of it, right? They also got to be played and reviewed. So we'll try to get to as many of these as we can. And you'll see some of them and you'll be like, oh, well, that's a great game. I hope you review it next week. Well, yeah, me too. Um, but that's it. Also, these are going to be some uninformed opinions. Yes. And we're just kind of guessing at the games and talking about them. That's pretty much it I can think of. Um, that being said, I don't know how long this takes. It takes a couple hours each year, but we'll find out sooner rather than later. So we're going to jump. We're going to jump to uh, the overhead shot, and we're going to start taking a look at these videos. So here we go. All right. Do, 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 do. Wait, you can see one of the games here. I need to push that off camera. Pre coverage at this show coverage. Benasar sold out of a lot of their games. They had mm -hmm. the Machiko Legacy, they sold out of that there. Nice. Um, so here we go. That's right, We the last time we did this, I had to do all the games upside down. So now, because oh, yeah. of our new camera. All right, so Bus. This is a, a reprint of a. Um, mm -hmm. I heard it's like Bus Roots, but then there's also Time Travel. <laughs> I think it's Splatter. So I have never played Bus because the original game looked horribly, but now Capstone Games has done it. So I'm looking. Mm -hmm. That looks a lot nicer there on the on the box. I wonder since these games, none of these games are huge. Maybe we should zoom in to I can make a this. little bit of zoom. Yeah, a little bit bigger. That way people can see the games more easily. Nice. Also, people said we lost audio, but then it was back. Yeah, I think when I switched it over, I had to click a thing real quick. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it looks good. Now slide it over a little bit the other way since uh, that way. Yeah, there we go. There All we right. Go. Next game. I think my kids oh. are going to be super pumped about this one. I'm super pumped about this one. Minecraft Builders and Biomes. Yeah, well, my kids love Minecraft. Do you play Minecraft? I played Minecraft in beta. Now I sound like one of those hipsters. Oh, like, I played, I played Minecraft, Minecraft before. before cool. was, exactly. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I played a bunch with, like, coworkers and stuff back in the day. Well, I'm fun. hoping this one is good. It, the, I like the block things. And, so, cool. I'm hoping. And my kids are all about Minecraft on the Switch right now. So, maybe it's good. Well, are gonna you going to get up and walk? <laughs> Just throw them in a pile. We're not going to have room. Just throw them in a pile and every once in a while I go push the pile over. <laughs> I, this is, like the Kool-Aid man? I don't, I don't man. think it's like an exercise. Thing. Oh, yeah. Mandala. This is for two players from Lookout Games. This looks like your kind of game. I'm going to put this on Z's desk. <laughs> I don't know if this is good or not, right? Uh, who's the designer? Trevor Benjamin and Brett Gilbert. Well, I do like Brett Gilbert. Mm, nice. Yeah. Well, you can hope it's good. All right, here's one people are waiting to see. The new Azul. Ooh. 
with really, really, really pretty tiles inside it. This is Azul 3. I hear it's the longest of the oh, really? uh, Azuls. And it's huh. some people are saying it's the best. And they said it's closer to the first one than the second one. I have no idea. But I do say that I saw the tower inside. It's more constructibly, it's more better. It, it fits together better than the first one. It's more, oh, gotcha. it's more better. It's than the durable, first one. is what you're trying to say. It is. All righty. Let's jump here. While I'm out of here, give me that knife in there. The knife? Yeah, I want to I hurt I want to hurt somebody. Uh-oh. I don't know if I should be sitting here. I want to hurt somebody. This we can just unbox here. This is the map for... Have you played Era yet? I have played Era. Um, yeah, well... But I yeah, got I'm to see how this works. I got the map for... Well, just a map. Did you get the stickers? Dun, dun, dun! No, I didn't. Well, Should I have asked for them? Well, we painted, we painted up the ours, ones we have so. in the library, so... But it'd be interesting to just see how the stickers yeah, work. Yeah, but this with mat this is one of those mats that when I wow. saw it, I was like, why would you ever not play with the mat? Uh, table space, I guess? <laughs> but that's really cool, though. Yeah, you but you put, you put everything the in the middle pieces. of the table. Oh, you're right. This does take a lot. But it man... a lot, yeah. Yeah, but now you know when one's empty. Oh, for sure. Because that's the problem with the game. You're supposed to put these markers out. And I'm like, oh, that's right. Someone bought the last of these different things. But here's the spots to put the dice. And then the different buildings. I think this looks awesome. Yeah, it does look really this good. This is definitely an optional thing. But it is cool. For sure. All right, here's some small games. These are from uh, Quinted Games. And I we now know the company is Quinted. Because we asked when we were there. Oh, gotcha. Uh, this is the one that was from uh, Jason... Uh, Tagmire, oh, the, the, the button shy, button stuff. shy. So they're redoing them in these boxes, and these boxes have this. They're like they. So if you can see, well, whatever. I'll just open it. It's got like a little bit what of a like hinge thing almost. Or yeah, and they're magnetic, and I, and I oh, really it's magnetic. That's awesome. Yeah, and this is a nice way to hold a single deck of cards. So you can see here, and it, wow, and. I mean, I could probably shake it open, but still, this is a much better way. I like this better than a box with a lid because yeah. it won't pop open. You don't need to rubber band it, per se, and it still maintains that really small. They put more score sheets in these Gotcha. because uh, they don't need the wallet thing, but it's still small. It's not like they made it massively oh, for big. Sure. I don't know anything about this one, but it's called stew. <laughs> so there we go. So you're going to have to stew on that one a little bit. This one I actually played at Essen. This is... Similio Fables. Oh, cool. All right, so. And history. Yeah, we're going to do a live play of this game right now. Is it that short? It is. All right, so we're going to do the hist uh, This is the fantasy one. All right. So I'm going to pick a character, and this is my character. Okay, so I'm going to put that character down, and then I'm going to put, I want to say, uh, 11 more characters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Then we're going to shuffle these. And we're going to put them face up. You didn't see the bottom one there, did you? No. Let's shuffle it. Okay, good. Well, whatever. That could be. You're trying to figure out which of these characters is the My Seeker character. So Queen of Hearts, Tinkerbell, Wicked Stepmother, Little Red Riding Hood, Big Bad Wolf, Snow White, Sea Witch, Alice. Uh, I don't even know how to say that one. So I'm oh, guessing that's Mangio Fiocco, that's the he's from the Adventures of Pinocchio. He's the bad guy. Oh gotcha. Prince Charming, Mad Hatter, and Dorothy. So now I'm gonna draw a hand of cards here, and I'm gonna pick one of these cards, and I'm gonna say whether it's they share common trait with one, my character or they don't. And we're working together or Yes, this is a cooperative game. I'm trying I'm trying to get you to guess it. Okay. So I'm gonna draw um and blah 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 blah. I'll draw five cards. Five cards. All right, so I'm going to put this character out. I'm going to put her up here at the top. And I'm, if I put her this way, that means similar, something similar to the person. If I put them this way, not similar at all. So I'm going to put it, her that way. Now you need to eliminate a character. Okay. And so we're, we're going to keep... So that's Cinderella. I'm guessing that means not princesses. So I'm going to eliminate Snow White. Okay. So... We're still alive. Okay. <laughs> I'll draw another card. And I'm going to say not similar to Aladdin. Uh, now you got to eliminate two. 
Oh, dag. Hmm. Not similar to Aladdin. So I'm going to... Or Cinderella. You can always go back right, and right. use the old clues. Which I'm going to do. I'm going to get rid of Prince Charming then and the Wicked Stepmom because Wicked Stepmom is from Cinderella. Okay. Good logic there, but we're still safe. <laughs> okay. Woo! <laughs> All right. Hmm. I'm going to say similar to the Cheshire Cat. Huh. Now you gotta eliminate three. It's getting harder. <laughs> Dag. Uh. Wow. I guess I need to keep the characters from that show then. Uh, By the way, this game is called Similio Fables. So getting rid. I put of a card here so people the dude can. We can't say his name. Okay. Uh. Ugh, the big bad wolf is 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 furry. So you can play this as a co-op game and everyone can co communicate. Tinker Bell's out. And get rid of Dorothy. Dorothy's out. We're still safe. <laughs> so let's rearrange them to show there are six people left. Here you'll get, now my next clue, you're going to get rid of four of them. And then it comes, if, if that's correct, it comes down to the 50-50 chance. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh, my. All right, I'm going to say... Um, not similar to the Tin Woodman. Huh. And I have to get rid of four? You do. Those are the four you're getting rid of. You're keeping the Queen of Hearts and Alice. Yes. And we failed. It what? was the Mad Hatter. Well, I figured with the Tin Woodman, the Mad Hatter's insane. The Tin Woodman's kind of... Not insane. He's not insane. That was the whole point of it. He's dopey. But let's say you had let's say you had it down to these two. Then right. I give you one more clue, and it's a 50-50 thing. Gotcha. I have won this with people. Wait, my three that I was keeping was those three, but with with the Tin Woodman, I was like, oh, that's pointing me away from the male character, the silly character, or whatever, so I took him out. So there's two sets of this. This is from uh, Crinia Creations, by the way. There's two sets. There's You can play the fables or the history, but yeah. another fun thing you can do is you can play with one set and use the other set as the clues. Oh, oh that makes it way harder, I'm sure. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. So that's just an interesting... Uh, these are interesting. That's Similio History. Review soon, I'm sure. <laughs> Alrighty. Coloma. This is from Final Frontier Games. Coloma. Uh, yeah, you, the you know Final these guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is a big uh, Euro game. I hope this one's good. I haven't liked all these guys' things. They're yep. usually too not developed, I, I found. They gotcha. usually have a ton of pieces. They did the Robin Hood one. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, but I hope it's good. Their stuff always looks fantastic. Nice. Well, uh, this is a board. It looks like a board. For a game we already have called Zona. Nice. All right. Here's Chartered Jolly Dutch the Golden Age. You got to say, this cover doesn't do anything for me, but look. Smiling. He is such a Jolly Dutch. We have improved... On these Euro <laughs> style games. Well, maybe this one makes you feel happy, unlike all the other Euro. It does have these 3D buildings on it. That looks cool. Oh, nice. Yeah, I don't know. You know, who knows if the game's good or not? It's not your style. Who cares? But I'll looks, play it. Looks like a thematic story driven game to me. Psych! The Food Chain Magnet Expansion. I know people are going to be going crazy about this. Oh, they were. I like it. But I think it's weird because it's like a serious Euro mm -hmm. game, and then it's called The Ketchup Mechanism. This is actually heavier than the base game. Really? Yeah. Is it as expensive as the base game? Yes. Is the art as bad as the base game? <laughs> well, it wasn't the, the art wasn't bad from the base game. I don't mind this 50s it was artwork. Just... It was that board. Gotcha. The board looked like a prototype board. It didn't cost like a prototype board. Yeah, that's the truth. I know it's one of Jason's favorite games. Like, I need to learn how to play this game and beat Jason in it, and then I can steal That his would crown. be fun. All right. <laughs> Masters of Renaissance. This is the Lorenzo Magnifico card game. So, nice. I hope it's good. I didn't think the game. You know, I, I I very rarely play a board game and say I wish they made a card game of this. They've got a bunch of marbles in here. Was marbles in the regular game? No, it was not. Huh. So interesting. But I don't know. Cool. Geek out. Yeah. Masters. Uh, I don't know anything about this one at all. It has a die with a forty-two on it. There you go. And other stuff. This is Geek Out Masters. With English rules included. I wonder what the meaning of the 42 is. 
They actually tell you in the back of the box, in case you're wondering. <laughs> El objetivo. Oh, I'm sorry. That is in Spanish. But there's a sixth phase. Oh, wait. The Geek Out Buenos Aires community gathers people with strange tastes. Represented dice of its logo, you can find various themes like comic, fantasy, video games, sci-fi, and board games. But there's a sixth phase, the number 42. <gasps> in the Douglas Adams famous novel, that number is the answer to the meaning of life. The question about the meaning of life. Oh, and what better that's what way to means. find the meaning of life through a game that reunites everything we love. I would say that I'm not sure comics, fantasy, video games, sci-fi, and board games, as much as I love those, I would not say that they really pertain to the meaning of life, in my opinion. I would say that it means that we shouldn't play it. No, I'm just Here's Kingsburg the Dice Game, which is really weirdly named since Kingsburg is literally a dice game. Yeah, that box is smaller than I thought it was going to be. It's actually, it should be called Kingsburg the Roll and Write Game. Gotcha. I've seen this one. You should buy Kingsburg. Oh, nice. I know some people are looking forward to that. Death Battle. <laughs> <laughs> is this another, like, super fun Find your weapon, game? use your skills, grab your armor. Oh, but there's dice. There are 50 custom dice in here. Ooh, they look, they actually look pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's open this and see. We don't, we're not going to open everything because we got to save some of it for the daily unboxings, but we have too many that <laughs> some of these will never get opened otherwise. Oh my goodness, daily unboxings. So many boxes. Ooh, a nice dice bag. It is a nice dice bag. All right, I'm, I'm good so far. I know, right? Let's see. Yeah. Lots of luck. Lots of luck. Wait. But I missed multiple times. Well, there's only one face that you don't get the the, <laughs> the four-leaf clover. Let me roll the lucky dice. Not so lucky. If you roll any unlucky. That's actually the perfect odds. You rolled six, and you got the odds of six. So one face, and you got one of each of the other faces. There you go. Oh, here, we can tell you what they mean. There's no special trait. This is initiative dice. So if you roll these, highest speed... This gives you armor. Yeah. This lets you swap a die with your opponent. Oh, snap. This lets you re-roll another die. Seems. Lucky die gives you an extra hit. And critical dice, which is either one, two, or nothing. Double hit. All right. Got to say, for a small game, this one is impressing me with how it looks. With the exception of the cover. I just like translucent dice. I, I really do. Well, as long <laughs> as you can read them. I don't like translucent dice when they're hard to read. I like translucent cubes, all that stuff, like the King of Tokyo cubes. Yeah, this that. one doesn't look. This one doesn't look half bad. Death battle. Gizmos. You're like, wait, we've already seen Gizmos. The second edition, now with a plastic dispenser. I love Gizmos. I really like that game. I am curious. Again, I'm not doing an unboxing. I think. Of this I one. think the first time either of us played Gizmos was together. That game went great. Wasn't that when we played the Man vs. Meeple guys? Were you uh, in that game? I don't remember if it was with them. Or maybe it was with one of them. I'm not sure. So the main the difference here like, hmm. is it's, it's a plastic container. But the other part is still... That will still be good, though, because sometimes you no, have No, I'm okay with that. I don't, down. I don't mind that this part is still the things. Yeah, the plastic container, the other one, they didn't always roll out, right? Right. They're replacing... They, all, they, just, they recently replaced the plastic container for... Um, that's what's, nice. What's the other one with all the models? Uh, uh, potion Explosion. Potion Explosion. So this one looks pretty cool. I'm glad that there is now a plastic. I didn't even know this was happening. Did you? Uh, I remember somebody saying it. I think maybe Chris said it. Because, you know, he looks at the news and stuff. Come on, guys. 42 is from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <gasps> what? <gasps> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Pulling back the sarcasm. I was, I Sorry. was joking when I said I didn't know what it was. This happens a lot to me sometimes. I'll, we're, we're too dry. Americans just sometimes have dry humor. All right. Disneyak. Weird treasures. Uh, cool. It's the Pumpkin King. You never know with these games. I mean. Sure. It might be fine. Giza. From Jem, there's like a guy chasing them. I will say though that they don't seem to be running as fast as I would be. Maybe they didn't know he's there. She's kind of running like, ah. like she, she knows he's there, but the rest of these guys 
don't even know the homies behind it. Here's them. another thing people are going to be pumped about, the expansion oh, yeah, Underwater sure. Cities. Now, this one's interesting because they, this one's heavier than the base box because they remade the boards that you can, Ooh. they have the double thing. They're so much better boards. Yeah, yeah, the recessed insert, the recessed boards where you can put the different things in there and they stick in right. This one people are going to be super pumped about for sure. It's a box. Oh, 3D printed out. these came in. Nice. What are these for, you might wonder? This is for tapestry. These go on the bottom mm -hmm. of the different buildings, and then you can put them on the board, and they'll fit in perfectly. This is from Klund Creations. That's with a K. K-L-U-N-D Creations, K-R-E-A-T-I-O-N-S, from Etsy. So hopefully these work out really well. Nice. And I'm, I'm pleased about these. I got two sets because I have two sets of tapestry and a dice tower library. There you go. Yep, indeedy. Here's some Carcassonne map chips. Oh, they go with the new maps? Probably. Cool. Well, does that mean the maps are gonna be shown soon? Spoilers. <laughs> I'll set this off to the side so it doesn't get lost. Oh. Maps! What? I'm a little worried. I hope these made it through okay, right? Yeah. So they like vinyl paper yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't oh, know okay. how I don't know oh. how we're gonna store them in the dice star library. I think which way should like you roam? Tomb. Should you roam the other way? Huh, I'm not sure. Man, that's gonna be hard to yeah, we'll have to figure that out. I know, I know. Every time I mention someone's like, plexiglass. Yeah, but plexiglass is not the easiest thing to carry around to a convention. So anyway, let's look at them. This one here right. is the Iberian Peninsula. I'm really pumped about these because you can start in multiple places. Oh, gotcha. And if you connect outside, you get points. Oh. So like if I connect, if I build something here and connect to that road. Yeah. I, uh, connect to that road, you get points. I like that. Nice. And look at Madrid itself is worth... You've played Carcassonne? Yes, I've played okay. Carcassonne. Come on. Yeah, but this this is going to be more competitive. Oh, yeah. Cause, because you'll build your city, I'm building my city. Because somebody will start on this, and then you'll be like, nope, I'm going to put mine on the edge of it. Nope, I'm going to put mine on the edge of that. Alrighty. Uh, Carcassonne can be cutthroat, I actually. By the way, someone asked about pallets here. We're not bringing over pallets at all this year. Because it worked out so great last year. Speaking of which, we need to trump out that light. The what glare light. The oh, third yeah. light over there. Well, I think also the, the whiteness of this is whoosh. Hmm. It's quite a bit darker. I can do medium. A little bit. It's good. Yeah, it's good. Okay. Now, now. Well, see, it's it's this corner then. Well. So go down I mean. a little bit more. <laughs> We're so precise here. Yeah, whatever. It's okay if it's, it's a little It's going to have to go all the way out. That's nah, so. fine. I'm not worried about it. All right, this here is France, Everybody which has read France. bottles of wine everywhere. Maybe that's what those tokens go with. What oh, colors yeah. were they? Purple. Were they purple, orange. blue, and yellow? Yes. What? I feel like that's the map they go with. Maybe they go with each map in a different way, though. Map chips. All right, this one is Germany. Well. Of course, we expected Germany to be in there. Is Essen on the map? Garbage. It doesn't say Germany on it. It says Deutschland. Oh my word. <laughs> this one here is Benelux. I don't know what that means. Chat will tell you in two seconds. Oh, Amsterdam. So that's uh, Holland. This one looks cool. And then Great Britain. This has me actually pretty excited to play Carcassonne again. Yeah, so this works with just the base game? Uh, it better. Gotcha. Uh, I, I mean, think it looks so. base game, so... This this looks neat. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's more of those dots. Maybe this is the map they're used on. Because gotcha. definitely it looks like that's where they would be placed. Huh. That's cool. All righty. I'm still trying to figure out how we're going to store these. Yeah, oh, that sure. other one was Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Dave Luzo won't let you forget the Netherlands one. Yes, we know that the Iberian Peninsula includes Spain and Portugal. Here's Coffee Roaster, a solo game. Oh, I'm sorry, a premium Solo game. There you go. From DLP and Stronghold. So it's premium blend. Here's a game I think Roy and me are going to like, <gasps> hopefully. Oh, Sanctum. I really enjoyed uh, the other game that they did. Um, Adrenaline. Adrenaline. So I'm Yeah, yeah. This. Well, this is, I, I know it's a, a Euroized thing, but the mm -hmm. miniatures look good. It was getting very good reviews from people who played it. 90 minutes. Sounds good. So 
That is a Sanctum. Nice. Uh, let's move to some small games. We have Invictus, the Odin. Nice. Hoarders. Mint Condition. I, so I played this one at the convention. Mm -hmm. So the way Mint Condition works is it's a drafting game, and you're trying to keep your games in mint condition. So you'll get cards that say things like Cheeto Fingers. They don't say Cheeto <laughs> Fingers, but that's what they are, you know. Or spilled drinks. And you're drafting trying to get the fewest points. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised you opened it though. You just devalued I it. know, I know, I know. <laughs> Alright, then we got Nishi Kigoi. That's That's cool. from Jam. We already saw a company from them, I a game from them. Oh gotcha. Oh, here's another one from them. That was the one with the Egyptian mummy things. And oh gotcha. Mastabas. Yeah, yeah. They must be a company making small games. This was not on my list, so they must have dropped them off by the booth. Gotcha. Another expansion people are excited about? Oh, for sure. What? More terrifying Mars! Craziness! Woo! This is an expert expansion. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It oh, it adds 30 minutes of the game like? That I'm a little worried about. Terrifying Mars is already kind of a long game. Listen, sometimes epic takes long. Got it. Florenza, the dice game. So, um... He's painting dice on a wall. Nah, it's a rolling right? But it looks like a... It actually looks like a... This one's open, so we can take a look at here. Um, this one's from uh, Postscriptum. So, this is a more involved rolling right? Oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. They're bored and dice and resources. This is not a short game, like most... It's 30 to 90 minutes. Wow. Yeah, I know. I'm okay with that if it's a good game. An hour and a half for, for Yahtzee? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Boo, we said to Roy. No, it's all good. All right. Social Train. Oh, this is the first thing this. Oh, it's not Gem. It's GDM. Wow, they sure made that confusing. They did. Here's two more games from the same company. Social Chain and Troya. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Oh, it is GDM. It says it there. Wow, that sure looks like a gem, though. Yeah. Oh, there we have it. There you go. All right. Ooh, Haba time. Ooh, nice. Miyabi. This is from Michael Kiesling, who everyone knows. He's done it. Azul. Sweet. And, uh, is it, what? That's interesting production. <laughs> Sam would be annoyed. Oh, another Tetris-style game. Okay. Well, I mean, I'm assuming it's good. Listen, it's thematic because sometimes you have your Tetris pieces and you have to twist them in certain Japanese ways. Garden, and that's I the know. reason that this side is this way. And then you twist your Tetris piece. This is what I'm excited about. Esteril, 1942. <sighs> this is a game that came out a few years ago, but this is a super box. It includes all the expansions and stuff. This is a really fun uh, tile laying spy game. Oh, cool. Where you put the spies down and they affect the other spies based on how you play them. Oh, nice. It's a nice back and forth game. I really enjoyed it from Mebo. Sweet. I'm extremely excited about this one. On the Underground. This is the new version oh, yeah. of it. It's so... This box cover is amazing. It's like, mm -hmm. I might do top 10 box covers this year. This will, be on, this will be on the list for sure. Yeah, that is really sweet. And guess what's on the other side? Another box cover. That's, so if you sell it, if you're doing the Berlin, you can sell it in the German stores this way. And then if you sell it in London, you have this side. That's awesome. And all the information for the game... Is on the sides, huh? It has pictures and everything there. That's I thought that's cool. actually a pretty neat. That's a pretty neat idea. Yeah. Uh, I think I like the London side a little better, but it has a fair. It has the London eye there, but it still looks pretty cool too. Yeah, this is really neat. I'm really pumped about this one. Yeah, I know you've talked about that game a lot in the past. There's Dice Settlers of the Western Sea. I've already played this one, but hey, we'll talk about that soon. Nice. More from Capstone. Remember when Capstone made like one game? Um, also from Frosted Games, Cooper Island. Mm -hmm. It's like a piratey themes style game. It looks neat. I like this. It's the epitome of an expert game. You need to stop saying stuff like that. We'll <laughs> tell you. What does that even mean? It is. What's an expert game? You know, the game is really good at what it does. It's an expert. Or maybe you need an expert. Need to be an expert to play it. Is that their way of saying that? I don't, I don't know. know. 
It means it's complex. It means it's not for the faint of heart. All right, here's one of my top anticipated games at the thing. Oh, Sarah's yeah. Sarah's Vision. This one looks really good set up. It has this... Um, like these Jenga mm -hmm. block things, they look really fantastic. What's interesting, the company that made this is an insurance company. Oh, crazy! They made it for like their employees. Huh. Now, of course, that doesn't. Of course, that doesn't say is the game any good. I don't know, but I hope so. So what you're saying is, Sarah runs an insurance company. That is correct. That's what I heard. Uh, here's a couple decks of cards. What game do these go with? I don't know. It sure looks like. A little bit like Carcassonne. You got sheep. There's you more got cards. Fields. I don't know what game this goes with either. You got more cards. Does anyone know what these games go with? That has money cards. It must. What game did we get that doesn't have the components in the box? Well, guess we'll, we'll find set out. Set these on the table. All right, Friedman Freeze Fire. So this is those fast forward games. I don't yeah. know if you played any of them. I played one of them, uh, one of the first ones. Yeah, but this one's a video game, and it's only for one to two players. Gotcha. That's cool. Interesting. I, I tend to like these, so that's cool. All right, Lux. L-U-X. This is from Surprise Stare and Frosted Games. Tony Boydell did this. He's the one who did Snowdonia. Is this a single player game? It is. Single player oh, game, 15 gotcha. minutes. Solo. More of these are being designed. I don't play solo games though. Chat, chat, or uh, chat disagrees. <laughs> comments always are like, oh, Mr. Not Solo Gaming, another solo game. Throne of Allegoria. This is from Spielworks, which means it's probably not in our wheelhouse, but gotcha. you never know. Um, doesn't look like it's in our wheelhouse. Heavy and beige. <laughs> <laughs> I like some of the games from Spielworks are fine, but covers like this, I guess some people love how this cover looks. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I should. That's how they uh, weed out the unsophisticated crowd. Marco Polo 2. I heard it's fairly different than Marco Polo. Some people don't like this one, but like the first one, and other people have mm -hmm. switched out on that. Is this a game of, like, trying to find each other? No. Oh, okay. Weirdo. <laughs> My pile is getting really unwieldy over here. Expedition. Well, oh. good thing is we're almost done. Psych. <laughs> Not even close to true. I'm going to have to do something. Expedition to New Dale. This is um, from Alexander Pfister. This is the board game version of Oh My Goods. Oh, nice. But it has stories, and you got to go through and play through huh. a campaign type thing. That's kind of a cool cover. Yeah. From Queen Games. Runestones from Rudigord Dune. Dorn. Dune. Rudigord. Rudigord Dune. Dorn. <laughs> it's because I said Runestones so that uh, this one looks cool. Definitely is abstract, but it looks neat. Cover's okay. Cover looks kind of generic. Yep. Nanty Narking. This is from Martin Wallace. This is actually a reprinting of the game that Martin Wallace did in the uh, that funky uh, fantasy universe. Uh, what's that universe called? The one. Uh, I'm not sure. Martin Wallace's. It's definitely a remake of a game, which name is escaping my mind now. That Mayfair did has some cool plastic pieces though. You might like this one. So, Why can uh, I not remember the name of that game? Well, chat will tell me. So I'll tell you then. So Natty's a snitch. So that's what that means. No, that's not what that means. She's a narc. Nova Luna. This is from Uwe Rosenberg and Corne Van Morsel. This is a... This is insane. What, the number of games? Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> they're not even halfway through. Tis true. Here's the good news. If you're coming on a Dice Tower cruise... Or Dice Tower West or Dice Tower East, these games will be there while the good ones will be. But right, we're assuming they're all good right now. So yeah, this looks very abstract, but it might be good. Discworld, thank you. There you go. Discworld, Ankh Mork Pork. Oh yes, yes, yes. So yes. that's a the Nancy Narking is a remake of that, as nice. many 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 people have told me in chat. See, more Uwe Rosenberg I got goodness. Our backs. Robin Van Luxley. This is a two-player Uwe Rosenberg game, which looks a lot like um, oh, yeah. Targi, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. I don't think it is. 
I remember you guys talking about this. Then from Stronghold Games, the new version of a Gizia. So that's a that's not a bad I cover. Say, I actually really like that cover. I, <laughs> that art is nice. Well, I always like when the emboss parts of covers. They look good. Mm -hmm. And uh, travel down an aisle, gather resources, build. This looks like a travel brochure. Come there you on, go. come on down. I hope this is good. I never played the original game, so there you go. Oh, Z will be happy to see this one. Yggdrasil Chronicles. Oh, yeah. This was on his list. I did not realize when he was talking about it, it was 3D. Oh, yeah. That one picture, I was like, wow, that looks really good. Yeah, it's a cooperative game, and you play the different gods of Yggdrasil, and you're fighting off, like, Fenrir and all these nasty things. I only played the you. regular Yggdrasil a couple times, and I did not win. <laughs> yes, but I guarantee you, you will be excited about this next game. I didn't get it from Is that Essen. sarcasm? No, I'm no, no, no. I didn't it. get this one from Essen. It came in the mail. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, nice. Jeff may die. Cthulhu. Rob Davio and how did Eric they fit, Lang. How'd they fit that giant Cthulhu in this box, though? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe it's like inflates? <laughs> yeah. No, we did not get the giant inflatable, not inflatable, the giant Cthulhu. But I also don't think we necessarily need that giant <laughs> Cthulhu. There's lots of stuff in here. I know a bunch of people are pumped about this one. I'm assuming if we got it, it's either gone out to backers, has it? I Did anyone in our studio back it? I know a ton of people got the giant statue. I, I know at know least three game. of us backed it and then considered it. <laughs> well, anyway, we got the game. So nice. This there is one is. I know you're interested in, right? Yeah, I think it will be cool to play through. I'm hoping that it has lots of story in it. So we'll see. We shall see. Oh, here's the English rules from Marco Polo, too. Oh, we might need those. Zoocracy. That's awesome. Haas Games. That's a good cover. Yeah. It's an interesting cover. I would not yell at that rhino. I would be scared of that crocodile. Yeah. And this giraffe's in the background. Sorry, giraffe. I don't know anything about this. I hope it's good. Hmm. There's different animal parties. I like political games when they're not about real politics. Right. I'm okay with that. Politics with animals is funny. Oh! Dark Side Rising. This is the nice. reprint of the Thanos Rising game. I'm, I'm really excited to see if Darth Vader gets the Infinity Stones. No. So what it is, <laughs> I asked about that specifically. And you're building parts of the Death Star. I know, I know. I saw that. But they also have stuff from like all the Star Wars. Oh, well, that's cool. So you got you see stuff from the new ones, the old ones. They said there's prequels, but they, if you notice, they didn't put any prequel stuff on the, on the cover that I can know. They thought that if they put Jar Jar Binks in here, it might lower the sales. I did like, though, <laughs> that they use artwork and not stills from the the, 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 yeah, the movies. Yeah, it's always And, I mean, we pretty much already know how this game plays. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I enjoy Thanos Rising, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's well, pretty It's light. a good game. The new Ticket to Ride maps, Japan and Italy. Mm -hmm. A two-sided board. The Japan one is, intrigues me because when you go to the big cities, you then go inside the cities. Nice. And doesn't it have the, like the the bullet train or whatever sort of thing? or the No, there are bullet train? trains on there. Nice. And then Italy is another long one, and I'm not quite sure. It has a lot of ferries and stuff. So, oh, it looks cool. I really like Ticket to Ride, so very pleased about this one. Here's Weird Alchemy. That... In which you eyeball. can build... No, wait, no, that's weird science. All right, I got a bag full of small things here. Let's see what's in it. Okay. First, this is from Hobby World. Oh, this is candy. Delicious. <laughs> the guy should have come into work today. No, I'm just kidding. Look at this. It's a dice box. Oh, and this, oh that's cool. Yeah, it's cool. This is from a company called Game Maniacs. I like it. Let's play some role-playing games. Then we got a turtle shell, and I was told that this awesome goes too. with a game. And for life of me, I can't remember what game this goes with. Well, I'm sure I'll figure It'd it out. It'd be funny if it like popped open and this. This is a really tiny dice game. Ooh. This here is Santa Maria Exploration Deck. Huh. Here's a bag of metal coins. I don't know what those go with. Here's some treasure coins. This goes with the uh, pirate game. Pirates. 
Here's some more metal coins. Victoria metal coin sets. Oh, this is for Nancy narking. So this is where you went on a uh, upgrading stuff for the library spree? I didn't really do that. All oh, right. gotcha. Well, just put that over there. I'll get to the rest of that. All right. Speaking of which, here's the map for Pirates. Oh, nice. Did you play the Pirates game with us? I can't remember. Uh, I don't think so. Have you seen it? It's a really light game. I really like it. But this, this is better than the this is better than the carcass. Uh, wow. Oh, it's so pretty. Neoprene mats, man. They yeah, just neoprene so mats just make me happy. Except for when I try to store them. Oh yeah. But other than that, they look fantastic. Somebody needs to invent technology where you can put these in the boxes. Oh, I was talking to some publishers about that. If they, if someone invents that technology, boards are gone. Right. Come on, let's we'll start it now. Box of holding. I know someone out there is just having a heart attack. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Look at it. Look at it. We treat everything with respect. I. <laughs> <sighs> Halap, 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 halapagos. Halapagos. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't say that one. I would have said it sooner, but I was kind of enjoying the. <laughs> and Yogi Guru. That is. This game seems like it's gonna be. Yeah, I don't I'm not, know. I don't think I'm interested in that uh, one. It's like Twister with cards. Here's the Roll and Write Patrick game, Patrick Doodle. I don't know if I'd play with the card after it's been in the dude's armpit too many times, you know? Yeah, I know, I know, I know. All right, <laughs> here's the goodie box for that Defrosted Games. Remember they used to make the calendars? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no calendar this year. They're just like, sell it all together. Well, it's just, these are for the... These are for the games that were nominated for the DSP last year, I guess. Oh, gotcha. Let's see what's in here, this classic goodie box. We got some cards for... Um, just one. Yeah. Just one's awesome. All right. We got something for Ice Cool. Monopoly. Wait. There's now walruses for Ice Cool. Oh, do they just, like, stand in the way? I don't know. <laughs> this is for Leo. I've not played Leo. This is for Puerto Rico. Oh, that's right. This is the Buccaneer. This is a really cool thing for Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. And then some more things to do for Imhotep. Oh, yeah, yeah. So all these promos will be going into Dice Tower Libraries. So you have a chance to play them with their their games. I think we have every single one of those games in Dice Tower Library. You, too, can have someone guess Monopoly in just one. Dash Arena. Shells versus Creeps. Shills versus Creeps. Got it. Hmm. Actually, it doesn't look bad. It looks kind of cool in the back. Interesting. All right. This game does not have a cover that attracts me at all. Going postal. Does the cover make you want to? You go know postal? the tricks of the trade. You are you are actually. Wow, this game doesn't look good at all. Unfortunately. And I, doesn't going postal like nowadays mean like going crazy? Going yeah. crazy, but that's not what this game seems like. It is. It seems like it's about mailing the things. Not that I care too much. Here's Hurley Burley. This is the game from La Mama Games. They, they're ones who originally made um, Coup. Oh, gotcha. There are very few of these in existence, and this was a charity edition. All the proceeds go to the Game Loft Main, supporting kids in the community. Oh, Two cool. to four, 15 minute player game. All right, fine. I'll get out, get my <laughs> butt up, and grab some more games. Ugh. All right. Our board game situation is all over the place. Okay. This is a new version of Liar's Dice. Nice. That comes with a giant die. So let's see how it opens. But how many fours do you have? Oh, yeah, that's really nice. Oh, wow. Look at that. And it's for eight players. Oh, cool. Really cool. Yeah, 
And then each one comes with their own color dice. With the spiral, these are good quality dice too. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, this is a nice version. I'm always looking for like a good version of this to put in the right. library because it's. Although it's still like many of these versions, is it misses the board. Oh, gotcha. I like having the board where you put all the things on it. This is not English. This is. 40 dice, 8 dice caps, a bag, and a rule book. They could have put a little board in here, I think. But. <laughs> did not work. <laughs> that was awesome. Shut up. <laughs> well, now you know you can't roll the box. They tape it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then roll it. I do hope that lid stays on well, though. Eh, we're going to have to we'll revamp it like we do with everything else. Yeah. All right, here's a game called Overtime. Nice. Huh, I don't know anything about this one. This is what, so I look like editing the reviews. Here's Chris with the coffee. <laughs> Does that make me the little demon guy in yes, the corner? Yes, you're the demon stacking more, more reviews. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, just kidding. Normally I'm like, Tom, give me reviews. Sent some bitterness here. Boogie Beasts. Boom. Sweet. It look, looks like a timed game. All right, here's the new Gerdhards game that me and Roy are going to play right now because why not? Do you not? have to balance the game? Oh, oh, let's find out. It's really short. That's awesome. You can't really All see right. it, but there's a little wooden piece here, and it balances back and forth on that. All right, place it so, that the one, place it so it's tilting in one direction, so like this. All right, there we go. Really that far? Oh, wow. Okay. We're going to put the four red marbles in their designated tiles. So, there, 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 and there. Okay. And then you want white or black? Uh, black. All right. We should have eight marbles each. Yep. All right. So, on your turn, you can either place one of your own marbles or remove one of your marbles or remove a red marble. No, you can place a marble, move a marble, or remove a red marble. Or, and then, you rotate the game board. Wow, interesting. All right, so, so first you place it on one of the four outer double spaces. Okay, so I can put on one of these four. Uh, if there's an unoccupied position, if all the positions are occupied, you can put it on any. Then you um, or you can move one of your marbles one position ahead, parallel to the diagonals of the game board. Are you trying to get a certain number in a row or something? I think you can like do this, I think. You may move the marble onto an unoccupied position of a double space, but not within the same double space. You can't stay in that you can't move from one to the other because of obvious reasons. Um, and if it rolls, it rolls. Then you can remove a red marble. And that might make the other marble roll, but too bad. The other thing you do is you can take it and you can rotate it. You just do this. Gotcha. So everything rotates. Um, it's up to far. You can rotate it as far as you want. You just can't go back to the side that it was at for obvious reasons. Gotcha. If you show four marbles in a row of your color, horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, you win. Gotcha. If it happens to both of us at the same time because of a rotation thing, the person who rotated the board wins. Okay. If you can't take an action, you have no marbles to place, you can't move, and there's no red marbles to pull off, then you lose. I don't think that will happen. So I'm still a little conf Okay, so when you move, you move this direction. One, you move diagonally forward one. So I'll go first because white always goes first, and I'm going to place one here. Your turn. Can you put it in the same place as other Oh, no, are? and then I have to rotate it. That's right. So I'll just do that. And are you allowed to place it in the same place other things are? Yeah, there's an open space. Oh, gotcha. So I can put it here. And then rotate. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, it has to go in one of the outer four. Oh, it has to go in the outer four first. When you place it... Uh, yeah, it has to go in one of the outer four. And then you rotate it anywhere you want. 
Can you rotate it either direction? Well, sure, because you can rotate it as far as you want, so it's the same thing. Oh, strange. Right, I'm going to move in and then rotate like that. Oh, so you're moving them in. I see. I see. I put one here, and then rotate like that. Hmm. That's right. I know what I'm doing. I have no clue what I'm doing, I'm honestly. Lying. I have zero information about what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to move this one here and do this. All right, let's see. I'm going to continue to move in. And then I'm going to do this. Two in a row, baby! Doesn't have to be an empty space or no? It is empty. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and I can move in. Got to rotate it. You're required to rotate. No! Well, you know the other person can't win until there's four marbles on the board. Right. <laughs> it's not possible. I'm just trying to figure out how to get into your way. <laughs> Feels like a good move. Says you. I know. <gasps> don't. I don't like that. I enjoy it tremendously. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm going to remove a red marble. <gasps> I know. How could you? Um. This is very uh, two steps ahead type thing. Yeah. Hmm. I'm gonna move this guy to here. here. I know, right? So how does the movement work? You move in like this. So it has to be adjacent though, right? It says, move on your marbles parallel to the diagonals of the game board. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. 
Yeah, these are the diagonals. So can you you can't go from here to here, though, right? Go from where to where? You can't go from that space to that space. No, because it has to it has be to with be. the diagonals. Okay. Um. Let's place. Let's move this one in. Then rotate. Did you win? Actually, I'm gonna move it this way. Hmm. Thank. Oh, so that counts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's a little heady, this game, because you really have to look ahead. Yeah. Like Pentago, you rotate the board, but the whole, because they they roll diagonally, it's kind of a weird thing. You're not allowed to rotate before you place, though, right? No. Gotcha. All righty. Well, that is uh Yeah, I was right four. on the edge of making that happen. Nice. These are the kind of unexpected game playthroughs you'll never get. You'll never get. That Wait, doesn't even make sense. That you didn't expect is what I meant. <laughs> there you go. You'll never get it. It's also weird I mean, to me that... I mean, you just saw it. I hardly, ever, I hardly ever see reviews on this company. But they always make really cool abstract strategy games. Yeah, and this is the one Kip that Z four. was talking about. He really likes a lot. This company. All right, this was number one on my list of games anticipated. The Magnificent. Did you, you play it yet? You will notice it's not in shrink. I did. We'll talk about it later. It better be magnificent with a name like that. What does it say? Quick. Say it. Is it an A or an F? Say the name. A... No. <laughs> I'm not buying it. A nice cup of tea. I think it's A L U B R I A. -A. Um, it says it in the back somewhere, probably. Anyway, it looks like Alubari. Alubari. Yeah, it's about tea. This is not the only game about tea. There's a lot of games about tea. This is from Tony Boydell. Again, the same guy who did um, Snowdonia. Nice. Free Market. This is from UniqueGames.com. Uh -huh. Not a good name for a company, but whatever. Cover looks okay. Looks like they're heading to New York. It's a kind of a weird name, though, like Free Market. Yeah. I do believe I saw some people talking about this in a very positive way. Gotcha. Who knows? Awesome. It's in a box size I like. From the designer of Ticket to Ride, Alan Moon and Bobby West together made Aftershock. This was a Kickstarter. I remember them talking about this on Kickstarter. The box is bigger than I thought. Looks kind of cool. I like the idea of an earthquake and your Aftershocks after the earthquake will take out people so you can still control oh, areas. Yeah. Gotcha. That's crazy. You're trying to rebuild things. Here's one of the new expansions for Everdell. Belfair. Cool. Yeah, I was surprised that these were there because this was just kickstarted, so I guess I wasn't expecting it to be there, but there you have it. Another one not in shrink because Eric Summer played it. He said it was good. It's a wonderful world. I unplugged the TV. <laughs> what? <laughs> you were getting a little insane with your throwing of games. I know, right? Then we have Fast Sloths. Pick me up and deliver me. So the way this game works, are you going to have to like redo the whole thing now? Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. I'll do it. So the way Fast Sloths work is you're a lazy sloth. <laughs> and you need to move around the board and get from one spot to the other. But you don't move. You have to have other animals carry you. Like you can ride an elephant or a giraffe or a unicorn. Yeah, yeah. Sounds interesting. The board itself doesn't look fantastic, but who knows? All right. Orleans Stories. Yeah. There you this go. was a much bigger box than I had anticipated, though. There is a lot going on here. So that looks pretty cool. Three, Two different stories contained in the game, but you can also play it not as a campaign, but just as a single, a single thing. So that's Orleans Stories. There you go. We're back. All right, grabbing the next pile of games. I need to clear a section just to place more games over here. Too many games, guys. Too many games. Too many games. Break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar. All right. 
Now we have Crystal Palace. Another one from Capstone Games. Nice. Another Euro game. Hey, you know, we were talking about in the past that there wasn't a lot of heavy Euro games. That is not the case this year. Oh, for sure. There is a lot of them. Here you'll meet people like Phileas Fogg, Levi Strauss, and Charlotte Bronte. Get victory points, guys. Here is... Oh, this game is heavy. Flotilla, feel it. Wow. Yeah, it's, a, it's just solid cardboard inside that box. Also, dice. This is like a post-apocalyptic where the world's been flooded, like water world, and you're building oh, nice. this flotilla of areas. Huh, interesting. Yeah, I hope it's cool. It looks neat. I like the theme. It's crazy because it doesn't really look like a whiz kids game, you know? From the makers of smartphone, we have Cosmo Drones Aquatica. I saw a lot of buzz about really, this. Yeah, a lot of buzz about this one. It's been getting a lot of uh, positive things. 60 minutes, one to four. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of neat. And there's a little Manta miniatures. Oh, nice. Paradise Lost. Be a hero. Free our words. Do I want to know what's going on over there? I probably don't. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I just got back at that game that I just lost at, I think. Green Feet just Games. Just don't take out the plug again. I'll try not to. Otter Kramer says, Fast Loss feels like a random game from 504. I don't think so, actually. I, again, I, I only talked to one group who played it, but they said that they liked it. The new Ryan Lockett game, Roam. Nice. Or Maur, backwards. This is a smaller game. He's done oh. these small ones. The World of Arzium. He's starting to name his world now, if you notice. Did you know oh, it was gotcha. called Arzium? No. I played many games in it and didn't know it was called Arzium. And it says includes fairy characters from near and far, isle bound, and above and below. Three fantastic games. This one looks kind of cool. Yeah. I shouldn't. I mean, it's Red Raven, so I automatically assume it's good until proven otherwise. So when we were packing our boxes and we went to the post office to ship everything, one box was slightly over. Like, just a little bit over. So we opened it up and this was the game we pulled out. It's from uh, the uh, Oink Games. I'm not going to be a Sam and make that Oink noise. <laughs> Nine Tiles Panic. <laughs> All right, there's one that you and I are both interested in. Oh, yeah, I'm interested to see how this plays. Yeah, with the cool miniatures. I'm pretty pumped about this one. I, I mean, I had fun playing it, so I'm mm -hmm. assuming it's still really good. I really like this idea. It, it fits in that, to me, the Blood Rage kind of, sort of. It's probably a little bit more, I don't know. It's, there's some pretty nasty stuff that can be done in this game. Gotcha. Yeah, this is from Colossal. Really glad. I've been waiting for this one for a while. Sweet. Then we have one of the few copies in the world of Kung Fu Panda, the board game. Do you like this movie? I mean, my kids like the movie. This movie's amazing. Oh, okay. Shut up, Roy. So you know what this is, though? I've already played it. It's a cooperative game, like a dungeon crawl in, in yeah. a sense. Huh. It's like Project Elite. Huh. Like, like really real like time Project Elite. Too? Like real time. You roll dice. You can re-roll them. But every time you roll certain things, you're thing moves around here, which causes more enemies to spawn and stuff. So if last top 100 Project Elite was your number one, does that mean the Kung Fu Panda board game is now your number one? Yeah. Spoilers! I'm just kidding. You're like, it's too early to say. Tune in to find out. Here is the other expansion for Everdell, Spire Crest. I really like the cover of this one a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah. The artwork one, for those games This one just looks... They both look good, but I'm really... This one you can ride people? What? Oh, that's awesome. It's awesome, but it still always freaks me out that animals are riding other animals. Listen. Yeah, I know. Sometimes. Okay, this sometimes is my biggest surprise out. from Essen Fair. I did not know this would be there. This is Ticket to Ride Poland. Oh, crazy. It's from uh, Rebel Games, and if you can see here on the side of the box, it actually says six and a half. Because hmm. they just released Map 7. This one will not be released in the U.S., or at least that's what they're telling us for now. So I imagine a lot of people are going to go crazy over this. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty cool. Um, it looks like a fairly basic map of Poland. And then when you connect different countries, uh, you will get uh, a point card. And the point cards go down. But if you notice, the connections to the countries are the colors of the flag of that country. Gotcha. So what you're saying is your best bet to play this is to come to a Dice Tower. Oh, my game. word. Okay. <laughs> We're starting to sound a little shilly always, there. Always branding. Always always, branding. always be branding. All right. <laughs> oh! That is a big box. This is the... Uh, 
Deluxe Snowdonia. This is they they uh, kickstarted this one. Wow. For sure. Yeah, boxes. Shipping this stuff back from Essen. I mean, and again, we shipped another 12 boxes or so of mm -hmm. games that we'll be opening up. And this this is stuff we just brought back in suitcase. And this doesn't even include the ones that Z and Sam brought back in their respective suitcases. Right. So, um, that's, all right. that's a big old game. Holy smokes. Indeed it is. All right. Ugh. We're getting close to the end here, everybody. I am also going to have to throw this somewhere. I think we got one more pile of games to go through. Oh, snap. Well, that pile was safe for another time. Alrighty. Okay, here we go. Games, games, games. Furry Foodies. Nice. I think it's a bad name. Because if, if you hadn't seen the box and I said, we're going to play a game called Furry Foodies. What Be would like, you think of? Uh, do we have to dress up? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a bunch of furries. They go in a restaurant. They're like, um, the food here better be good. Isn't it hard to eat with the, the, the animal head mask? It actually looks on? like a very cute, fun little game. Gotcha. Oh, it's from the app. Gotcha. All right. Also from the app. I thought it was an expansion for foodies. The deck the, building uh, game. Toy Story. What's the age on this? You're eight plus. <sighs> I think you could. It's, it's co-op, though. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, co-op helps. You can helps, play this with your kids. You, that's what you want, helps right? Helps you push that further down. Yeah, my kids love Toy Story. So Everyone loves it. There's a lot of text in the card, though. It's yeah. uh, typical. I want to say this is very similar. If I'm similar, not quite the same as the Harry Potter one. Gotcha. I think. Um, I talked to uh, the... Uh, designer of this, and she was telling me about you know what they could put in the game, what they couldn't put in the game, and I think that's what it was at Gen Con when uh, she was showing it to me. Yeah, this was awesome. All right, we have Encore. Uh, limited edition metal coin included. One single. It's from Space Cowboys. One single metal coin. Then we got a few promos here for this mega game Glenmore 2 Chronicles. This was on both you and Z's list of exciting things. Well, I had a chance to play this at the convention. Mm -hmm. Still on the list. Oh, snap. That's right. All right, from Real Grande, we have Butterfly, which clearly shows a moth and a hedge. Oh, maybe those are butterflies. I don't know. It looks kind of it looks okay. Looks like one to play with kids, maybe. Ah, cool. So? Quite colorful. Then I've already reviewed the original game, but for our library, we got a deluxe edition of Chocolate Factory. Mm-mm, good. Nice. Then, Lule de Pan. It's a very pretty cover. Oh, yeah. Uh, I know nothing else about it. Extra tiles. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, speaking of Harry Potter... Here's more Harry Potters. This is Death Eaters Rising. This is the Harry Potter version of Thanos Rising. Oh, gotcha. Here's the thing. After a certain point in the library, I'm going to have to go, well, you know, we can't put these all in. I guess. You're like, I want to play Thanos Rising. Which theme? Huh. I still they think need, that They need a deluxe box that you can put them all in. Oh, my word. And you fight Voldemort... And, I, well, I guess I shouldn't say that name. But, uh. You can say it now. You guy's dead. Well. Sacrifices were made. Alright, that's it. This is the last yeah. thing. It's Foodie a bag. 2.0. And this will mark our third game we play live on air. Oh, really? Yeah. What is this? It's Fubi Mini Fubi. <laughs> what? Alright, so we got. Oh, that looks crazy. You gotta take this and stretch it here. Take this and stretch it. How do I do that? It goes round, round like this. No wait. There we go. So this is a uh, football. Oh uh, yeah, or soccer. Let me see. Shh. I know, I know, I know. There we go. All right. So basically, you just gotta get it. My goal. But you can bounce it off these walls because they're really rubbery. There's, there's your stick. This is mine. Is this real time? No, no. You hit once and I hit once. So go ahead. You get the first hit. Oh, from here? Yep. Wait, am I yellow team or red team? Oh. You're yellow. Okay, yeah, I see. 
So then I shoot from here. And we gotta. There we go. Oh no! I like it. So then I shoot from here. Mm -hmm. All right. That One to zero. Oh. Come on, come on, come on. No. Yes. It's making me want popsicles for some reason. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo! I don't like that. I don't like that. Uh, uh, penalty kick, I guess. <laughs> offside rules. If the ball leaves the field, you get a corner kick. I get kick. a penalty kick. Really? Where does it kick from? Doesn't say. <laughs> Probably like from here. Right? Okay, That's a penalty yeah, we'll kick, right? Well, no, I assume we'll do it goes out where it came out. That's the way normal soccer is. I love that rule. Ah, I think it went across the line. Wow, you got way back over. I think that went in. Yep, two to zero. Well, that really didn't go anywhere. Yes. Oh, what the? <laughs> Come on now. What are you playing to? Three? Five? 85? So, just so you know, folks, this is a small version of Fubu. They have a much bigger one. Oh, really? I think the bigger one's better. This one feels too crowded. Gotcha. Oh, and they don't give you options for... It would be cool if they had, like, different setup options. But... Yeah, the problem with this one, I think, is that it's too small. It's, like, really, really... Hang on. It's first to, first to ten, but we'll play first to five. I mean, if you really want it to be like that, Tom... Ah, that's right. Get out of my face. No. All right, four to zero. <laughs> you can come back. Listen. I know. I... Everybody loves an underdog. Never give up. Never surrender. <sighs> See? Yes! You did it. In the game. Four to one. All right, yours, yours, yours. I was about to say your serve. Oh, we, we'll mix up the terms of purpose. I hope you get a home run. I'm hoping for a touchdown, honestly. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. It's like all of them in the way. Ah. Go! Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> oh! Yeah, that's right. You hold it forever. <laughs> I need a boo right, for that game. That's that. All right, so let me talk a little bit about this coming week. Tomorrow we'll be doing a live crowd surfing. Thursday we'll be doing board game breakfast and our top 10 holiday themed games. Mm -hmm. And then Friday we're doing our showdown of Funkoverse. Roy, me, Sam, and Z will be drafting teams. We'll be drafting opponents. Single elimination. Three games. Oh, snap. Um, and... Uh, that's on Friday. So all those things coming up. Will there be other videos this week? Yeah, we're going to have to wait and see. We're going to try to get some more videos up. We got some videos from our contributors going up this week and things like that. Um, but for the most part, we're still kind of recovering from Essen and getting stuff together. So Nice. Thanks so much for watching this. I know I guess it wasn't as long as uh, it was in previous times. But you get to see a chance at these. Not all these will get reviewed. But a lot of them will. Many of them will. I'm very excited about playing most of them. So until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I've been Roy Candy. And you've been watching our Essen Spiel Hall, part one, on the Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.